Hello, let's discuss another application of time speed distance that is boats and streams. How do boats behave when they are on streams? Suppose there is a river. So the river is always flowing. It is not a stagnant river. If a boat is moving in one direction, suppose it's moving upstream, it's going up the river. The effort required is much more. Why? Because it has to overtake the speed of the stream and then actually it starts covering this distance. On the downstream, however, it becomes a lot more easier. Even if you don't row, the boat will automatically flow with the stream. Here the concept of relative motion applies. The boat is moving up, the stream is moving down. They are both in opposite directions. But still, since the actual speed is the difference, the normal concept does not apply. There is the application. They are moving on top of each other. They are not moving on the same thing. If both of them are moving on the same base, then the summation is there. But if they are moving on top of each other, then in this case, the difference will apply. Let's look at an example. A boat is moving at 20 kilometers per hour and it takes two hours to reach a point. Find the distance. Main thing here is that the stream is not moving. It is stagnant. So it's stagnant water. We don't need to apply anything. So 20 kilometers, two hours, 40 kilometers in all. That's, that's pretty simple. Let's add the speed to it, speed of the water. The boat is moving at 20 kilometers per hour. It takes five hours for the boat to go upstream and come back. Find the distance covered if the speed of the stream is 10 kilometers per hour. Now here, the boat is moving at 20 kilometers per hour. The stream is at 10 kilometers per hour. So net net, you will be moving only 10 kilometers per hour when you're going upstream. So when, you, when you're going up, you have to conquer that 10 kilometers of the stream. And then your additional 10 kilometers is what makes you actually move on the water. So the net speed upstream is 10. And what about downstream? Now downstream, even if you don't move, the stream will make you move at 10. So if you're moving, it'll add. So you'll move at 30 kilometers per hour. Let's look at the formula. Time is equal to distance upon speed. So distance here upstream as well as downstream is D. So the time taken upstream is D upon 10. Time taken downstream is D upon 30. So adding the two, we get five hours. So D by 10 plus D by 30 is equal to five. Solving, we get D equals 37.5. So the total distance covered here is 75 kilometers. Let's look at another example. A man can row 50 kilometers upstream and 72 kilometers downstream in a total of nine hours. The same person can also row 70 kilometers upstream and 90 kilometers downstream in a total of 12 hours. What is the speed of the man and the speed of the stream? Let's look at how do we solve it. Now let's assume that the speed of the man rowing is m and the speed of the stream is s. When we go upstream, the actual speed will be m minus s and when we go downstream, the actual speed will be m plus s. If we put it, it will become too complicated right out, right? So let's simplify it. Let's assume m minus s, which is the upstream speed to be x and m plus s to be the downstream speed to be y. So upstream 50 kilometers divided by x plus 72 kilometers divided by y, which is downstream, the total time is 9. So 50 by x plus 72 by y is equal to 9. Similarly, 70 by x plus 90 by y is equal to 12. So we get two equations, two linear equations. Solving, we get x equal to 10 and y equals 18. Let's put it in m plus s and m minus s. We get that m is equal to 14 and s is equal to 4. So the speed of the man is 14 kilometers per hour and that of the stream is 4 kilometers per hour. This is how we can apply the same theories and concepts to solve many more problems related to boats and streams.